not too many trainers can say they've won a Kentucky Oaks and Kentucky Derby. Well, Kenny McPeak checks that list now. Kenny, what are you feeling this morning? Never, ever question the trainer's judgment. <laughs> this is that, That's good. You need to get that I patent. Sprung, I sprung that honor. Um, you know, uh, look, it, it takes an army of people. And um, I've just got a fantastic team behind me. You know, Greg Geyer runs the stable here at Churchill. Um, I've got guys at Oaklawn, Ray, Ray Briner. Alan Shell runs Farm in Lexington. It's, it's a team effort. Dominic Brennan in Florida runs Silver Relief Hills Training Center down there for us. And you can't do it without all, all the hard workers. Um, just amazing staff. And then you need good horses. So, you know, it's all got to come together. And it came together. But, um it's uh, just a real special, special weekend, and it's uh, still sinking in. At what point at each of these races did you feel like you had the race won? Well, um, I went into the, the race on the, the Oaks with a ton of confidence. I really, really expected her to win, and obviously she did. I mean, she, I, I said all week, I think, well, the quote was, they better bring a bear because I'm bringing a grizzly. And uh, her and, and Mystic Dan had worked together regularly this winter, and they were two horses that could keep up with each other, but they also made each other work hard. They actually got each other fit for the spring. But um, I felt for the last several weeks that I could win both races, felt really confident. You know, uh, even yesterday, the hard part's a 20-horse field, and you just don't know how it's going to go. Brian did an amazing job. I mean, that, 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 that was a classic ride and a classic race. I mean, he, he won that horse race. Obviously, we saw it get really close down the stretch with Mystic Dan. Were you nervous at any point? Well, it looked like he, he was going to sprint clear at the eighth pole, but then they were coming, and, you know, it, it, nip and tuck in the end, obviously. But, um, you know, look, I told my wife before the race, I think he'll win by four or five. I really felt that good. I mean, and he, he, he's just a really special horse and just feel real fortunate to be here. Obviously, these two horses are individuals, and they're very, very special. But how would you compare each of them? Well, total – uh, total opposites. Um, he is an old soul. He's a very quiet horse. He's easy to be around. Most big, strong colts are, are nippy and they'll bite you and this and that. He is just a sweetheart. And then she's a little bit of a high-strung, uh, more energetic. Um, you know, she, she gets upset more easy than him. And and um, she's uh, we have to watch her a little bit. Like, for example, we take we try to graze. We could take him out. You could drop the shank, and he'd stand there. Uh, with her... She gets all wound up, and she you really can't take her out because she gets uh, she wants to bounce, and run off and do things that you know, you know that she wants to do. So now I know we're relishing in the moment, and I just have to ask you out of sheer curiosity: when you have two horses like this at this caliber, what's next for them? Well, good question. Um, you know, we're going to contemplate the Preakness with Mystic Dan. Um, brief touched on Torpedo Anna going to the Preakness, but that's not going to happen. Um, more than likely she'll come back in five weeks, Belmont week and, and Saratoga, um, either in the acorn or in the Belmont itself. And then, uh, mystic Dan, will just make a decision as it comes. And, you know, we want to see him eating up and getting, uh, getting himself, um, you know, fresh into, out of this race and see how, how he acts in the next several days. Kenny, congratulations again. Great job to you and your team. Thank you so much for your time. And we couldn't be more excited for you. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you.